SIPs may be an acronym you've heard a lot about in the personal finance space. So in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down what SIPs are, whether you should consider opening one, and the best SIPs that are currently on the market. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So what is a SIP? It stands for Self-Invested Personal Pension. And as you guessed it, it is a type of pension which allows you to save and invest your money in the hopes that over time, you would have built a big enough pot to help fully or partially fund your retirement years. SIPs are sometimes dubbed as the DIY pension, and that is because how much money goes into one and which investments is chosen is all down to you. And because they are a type of pension, it comes with particular tax benefits, which makes it a great vehicle to save for your retirement. The benefits you get when investing in a SIP, or any private pension for that matter, is that you get tax relief from the government every time you contribute. Now, I haven't mentioned this concept in my previous pension video, so I'll provide a high level summary in this case. But if you do want a more in-depth breakdown, be sure to check out my tax relief video for more information. So the way this tax relief works is that the government will reward you for every contribution you make. They basically want to ensure that any money you contribute to your pension is not subject to income tax. However, because income tax is taken at source, which basically means it is the first to be deducted when you get paid from work, so the workaround to this is that they offer you tax relief instead. So the amount of tax relief you do get does depend on which income bracket you fall under. So here on the screen, you can see what the latest income tax bands are. And you can see that the income tax ranges from 20, 40 to 45%. So keeping it simple, this means if you contribute £100 to your pension and you are a basic rate tax holder, this will actually cost you £80 as the government will actually offer you 20% in relief which makes up the remaining £20. For high rate or additional rate tax holders, you get even more relief as you do pay more income tax. So for high rate earners, contributing £100 would actually cost you £60 and additional rates, this would cost you £55. Again, this is just a high level concept as high rate and additional rate relief is only a boost on a proportion of your contribution. But I always like to use this simple example just to purely demonstrate why pensions, or in this case, specifically SIPs, can be a great vehicle to save for your retirement because the amount you contribute to your pension actually costs you less and therefore allowing for more capital to work inside your pension pot making it more likely to grow even further earning you more rewards the earliest you can currently access your SIP is the, at the age of 55 with the minimum age soon changing to 57 from 2028. SIPs can also be used alongside any workplace pension you have and any state pension you may be entitled to and this is your reminder to subscribe now let's understand the types of SIPs that are available. Now, depending on what you read online, there's actually a whole load of variations of SIP types that you can read about, but a lot of them are almost too similar to distinguish from one another. But having a read through, I would say that there's really only two main kinds of SIPs available. Now, the first one is full SIPs. Now this actually offers the widest variety of investment options and is generally considered the purest SIP, which also means they are the most expensive. They tend to be designed for individuals who are experienced investors who like to experience a full range of investment options all within the pension wrapper. Having a full SIP usually means you are entitled to some investment advice from the provider itself, which is also another reason for the high fees. Now, the second type of SIP is the light slash DIY SIPs. Now, these do offer a wide range of investment choices, but not as many as the full SIPs. For a bit of background, when SIPs were originally introduced, they were generally for those with wealthy pockets. However, during the 21st century and thanks to the internet really, the low cost SIPs have been increasingly popular. In fact, if you are Googling SIP providers, you're likely to come across light or DIY SIP providers first rather than full SIPs as these are more sought out. So what do SIPs invest in? Now, one of the most appealing things about SIPs is that it offers more investment options which in turn provides you with more opportunity to diversify your portfolio for retirement. So some examples include stocks and shares, investment trusts listed on any stock exchange, UK government bonds plus bonds issued by foreign governments, unit trusts, open-ended investment companies, gilts and bonds, ETFs traded on the London Stock Exchange or other European markets, bank deposit accounts including non-sterling accounts, commercial property, real estate investment trusts listed on any stock exchange, and offshore funds. 
So yeah, as you gathered, you can see that SIPs do have a variety of investment options available compared to other normal private pension types, such as your workplace pension. If you actually saw my earlier video on how to fix your workplace pension, I showed that workplace pensions can be very limiting in their investment choices. And that's why I suggested an individual may want to consider investing in a SIP in certain cases. Which nicely leads me to my next point. Should you consider getting a SIP? So there is no one answer to this question, but I would generally say if you meet any of the following criteria that I'll mention now, then you may want to consider looking into it. The criteria includes if you are someone who wants to take more control of your pension investment decisions and looking for a wider range of investment opportunities, if you are someone with a lot of capital and perhaps would like financial advisors to help make decisions on your behalf, if you are someone looking to consolidate all of your pensions under one roof, again, this is something I mentioned in my workplace pension video. I discussed how someone might want to merge their old workplace pensions under one roof to both improve results and reduce costs. And a SIP can be a great option to do that. Another criteria is if you are someone looking to have more control on how you draw down from your pension when you retire, if you are someone who is self-employed and are looking for a vehicle to save for your own retirement, then again, a SIP can be a great option. Or if you are someone that does have a workplace pension, but you are looking to supplement it through a pension with better investment options, then a SIP could be the option for you. So yeah, if you do fit at least one of these criteria, then chances are that looking into a SIP might be a good option for you. Now, when it comes to SIPs, please be wary of charges. So SIPs can actually be quite expensive, especially if you are looking at the full SIP option, because again, these were typically designed with those with larger pension pots. But light slash DIY SIPs are becoming increasingly popular and are far cheaper than the more expensive counterparts. But there are some fees you should be aware of, and some of them are not so obvious when you do sign up. So the first common fee is the setup fee. So this is the fee for just simply setting up the SIP. You can find ones without the setup fees included, but this is usually compensated with higher fees elsewhere. So you need to figure out which option works best for you. So the next fee to be wary of is the annual management charge. So this will be a charge that will be applied to you annually by your broker to administer your SIP. Usually this fee is based as a percentage of what your pension pot is. So in theory, the higher the pension pot you do have, the more money you can expect to pay in annual management costs. And finally, another common fee that you can expect is dealing charges. So if you are buying and selling shares through your SIP, then there may be charges associated with dealing, just like if you were buying and selling shares via a normal exchange outside of the pension wrapper. Now let's look at some of the best SIPs that are currently available on the market today. So there are obviously a variety of options out there. So I would encourage you to do some of your own research um, as always, if you do want to consider SIPs as a potential option for you. I should probably mention that I'm not being sponsored for this video and I currently do not have a SIP at this point in time. When I joined my current employer, which was about six years ago from now, I actually merged all of my old workplace pensions with them immediately. In hindsight, I probably would have gone by the SIP route instead, but I actually didn't know about them back then, but hey, we learn. Anyway, based on my findings, I'm going to be splitting out which providers are the best in the following categories, which is the best when it comes from a cost perspective, which is the best from a low cost, but also has a good variety of investment options as a balance, and which is the best full SIP. Starting from a cost perspective, enter the Vanguard SIP. Now this has an account fee of 0.15% per year, and obviously this is a percentage based on your pot, but it is capped at £375 per year, which means the account fee will be maxed once you hit £2,500, which is actually really easy to hit from a pension perspective. So chances are you will be hitting the max charge, which is still very competitive, um, but you will be limited in your investment options as you can only choose from active or passive funds. But I should mention that these funds are very cheap. The cheapest fund that I found was at 0.07%, so it is very, very low cost. Now the next category was looking at SIPs that provided a good balance between cost and investment options. Now this one actually goes to Close Brothers Asset Management and AJ Bell. Both platforms have a 0.25% ongoing fee and they both offer a similar tiered pricing strategy as well. So as you can see here, they charge you less the more money you invest. And if your pot does get big enough, they will reduce your annual fee to 0%, so essentially zero pounds. 
Again, the fee structures are very similar between the two, but I would say Close Brothers have a slightly more favourable charge. Uh, and then when it comes to looking at investment opportunities, for both uh, providers, you can actually choose between stocks, ETFs, and bond investment options. So slightly more varied compared to what Vanguard have to offer. Now, looking at which provider offers the best full SIP was actually really hard to determine because I couldn't actually find a comprehensive list anywhere on the internet which is quite interesting. So I had a look at a few providers, but one that did stand out to me was Killick & Co. They are a multi-award winning full SIP provider who provide you with advisory service and a whole wide range of investment choices, including commercial property. Now, when it came to fees, there was actually no information on their website about what their fees are. And that was the same for all of the full SIP providers. You actually have to send in a request to find out this information. Um, so that's when you actually know you're dealing with the wealthy. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if you do have any more questions regarding SIPs. Um, and as always, if you did find this video very insightful, I would really appreciate if you give it a massive thumbs up. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.